Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so uh, come and paint along with me. Grab a brush, grab some models, grab some paint, and paint along. Today we're going to be working on Azrael's Little Assistant. This is for a commission slash myself. Uh, I'll explain in a moment. Basically, I'm, I'm painting up an Azrael for a commission, and I decided to paint up my own Azrael at the same time, because I didn't remember I had an Azrael, so it's all good. And today we'll be working on his little assistant guy because I am working on the model itself for a painting tutorial, so I can't really paint it off camera. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be cool stuff. So without further ado, we'll get to uh, painting this guy. As always, join along. Let's rid the world of unpainted models. And let's have fun doing it. Hey everyone, so today we will be painting these two little helmet carrier dudes. Him and him. They look identical, because they are. Good stuff. And one for me, one for a commission, and of course we have our Azrael's, which are our work in progress in the background. Look at him, he's looking good. Obviously he's for a tutorial, but uh, yeah, look good for the warp. So that's good stuff, look at that. It'll be a lot of fun today. We're just gonna, you know, paint these little guys because they matter too. They carry the helmet, and he's nothing without his helmet. Though, in my opinion, all, I always model my models with helmets when possible, because um, I think they should be wearing helmets, you know. Maybe because I'm a motorcyclist, I don't know, but uh, I feel like someone's here, so I'll be right back. Sorry, that's just Rubik barking at people as they walk by. I'm expecting a package today, um, but it hasn't come yet, so uh, it happens. Should be here soon, so I'll keep my eye out, of course. So yeah, it's going to be fun. Wow, this week went by fat. The weeks always do, and I really should apologize, people. My content has been very sparse lately for the free channel. Like this week, I re I've been really busy, and it's been hard. Really busy. Um, yeah. I know it's no excuse, but i got to put up more content, which I will be. I'm, I'll be filming a bunch of content over the next few days. Um, I'm going to go visit a buddy uh, later in a... In the next few days, I'm going to go visit a friend, and I'll vlog it. And, of course, we'll film a uh, Codex review on Saturday, because of Space Marines. It's been two weeks since the last Codex review, so there has to be another Codex review. That's the rule. And, uh, yeah, so that'll be good. But uh, i got to get miniature, uh, How to Play 40K back off the ground, and i got to just get my content to be regular again. It's really bugging me, but I try. Like, I'm really just, I'm busy. And in the end, you know, the free content is kind of what suffers because the, the warp people pay for the content. So i make got to make sure that stays on track, or at least as much as possible. And my other job, and then commission work, and, you know, it's just... Yeah. i got to get back on track. And it's hard. You know, I have to work pretty hard. But it's okay. You know, it's what I love to do. I just, it really bugs me when I can't get the content up. I have a drive to make the content. I just don't have the time to edit right now and to render and, and upload. But that'll hopefully change one day. So, what else? Everyone, obviously, if you want to buy a Mini Wargamer J t shirt. Check out miniwargamerj.spreadshirt.com. That's, it might be too extreme of a highlight. We'll see how that dries. I'll let that dry before I do anything more. So these two, two little dudes, and it'll probably take me the whole hour just to paint them. And as I said, while I was starting to paint this guy, I'm like, wait a minute, I have my own Azrael model. And the best thing about Azrael is he's still metal, which really sucks. I would actually really prefer Finecast over metal. Because he's a giant guy, and he's a giant banner, so he's really a heavy model. And these little dudes are metal, too. So what should we do now? Let's do the reds on his uh, helmet. All his wings are red, I believe. And, yeah. So I'm painting this up for a commission. I got the other commission done. And it's all wrapped up, and... Uh, well, hopefully, and will be mailed out tomorrow. Um, and this commission is my next one, so I'm, I'm making some really good progress on it, obviously. And I don't mind because I'm. It's going to take me twice as long to paint these two models combined, but it'll only take me, you know, not. It won't take me twice as long. I'm batch painting them essentially, but 
it's all good. Um, but it's a cool model. So let's start with the reds. Now that we got the oranges done, or the red, I mean, sorry, not the red, the oranges, we'll get the reds now done. I'm using a lot of wet palette lately, or I'm using a lot of my wet palette, which is good. It saves your paint for later. Only problem is sometimes if you make it too wet, uh, it bleeds the colors because they, they stay wet and they pool. But, uh, yeah, it's, these weeks go by so freaking fast. It's just crazy to me how fast the weeks go by. I find myself, like, I, pay, I film my... This is really my time where I sit down and actually reflect on the week. And this is really... Yeah, I always look back and go, wow. Went by fast. Went by really fast. You know? And, yeah. You know, it's been a busy week. I worked a lot. Filmed a bunch. The face-off tournament is finally underway. Um, we made a mistake in one of the episodes that we had to go, we had to go film it again. It was for the warp content, though. And then... Um, Today's Thursday, but this video might be going on Friday. We'll see. Um, so we'll see about that. But uh, the free face-offs went up yesterday, or today, technically, depending on when this video goes up. They're cool. I hope people like them. Um, I'm not going to spoiler alert. All I'm going to say is that one of them is... Ex both of them were kind of one-sided. Kind of. Just a little. And that is really running. I over-thinned it down. Oops. It happens. So, uh, yeah. What was I saying? Yeah. Um, there, the thing is, with face-off, I made sure that every contestant in face-off can kill at least two other members of the contestants of face-off to make it fair, right? And then I just randomly assigned seat one uh seats in the first round and we're going into that how it's going to happen and it, it is rock paper scissors in the sense that there are several situations where one could kill another and the other one could kill another which could kill another you know like um yeah as i said i'm not going to ruin anyone's but um and sometimes you know in 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 the first round the matchups are pretty harsh and some of them are a bit one-sided but it happens right we're trying to figure out who's the closest combat monster, the best of them all, so. But the one that people um, the one that people are very curious how it will do, and one of the ones from this week, check it out, it's a short one. I'm not ruining anything, uh, was the Wraith Knight. And the Wraith Knight is pretty freaking powerful. <laughs> he did pretty well. I'm not saying who won. But him versus Belial was pretty short. And, uh, oh, luckily that one was mine. Well, that just fell. I can tell the difference between them. So. Good stuff. So this might be a shorter one today. Only maybe like 40 minutes. We'll see. We'll get as much done as we can in this episode. You know, it's all about reading the world of unpainted models, you know? That's all it's about. What else happened over the last week or so? Um, I have uh, went. I was actually able to go and chill with some of the local gamers for a while. It was really cool. On Sunday, I went and played with um, this one guy locally in Peterborough. Has an event every month or so where he just gets guys 
and girl, I mean, anybody wants to come, right? His gamers come together, and we just play, eat some food, have a good time, play random matches against each other. You know, it's a good way to meet. But for me, it's been the, one of the best ways to meet the community here is, um, is to just go to these events and talk to people. And, you know, people usually want to talk to me because... Uh, I'm, I'm not a celebrity by any means, but uh, people kind of people know who I am in this community, right? It is a war gaming community after all, and so people uh, they kind of know who I am. They want to meet me and they want to play games against me. It was a lot of fun. So uh, I played two games on set on Sunday. Um, first one was against a Tyranid player. We had a good game. Well, I had good games both games. Both games were good. Um, Tyranid player, and I hadn't played against a Tyranid player in a long time. The last Tyranid player I played up against was um, Matt at Mini Wargaming. Like, it's been that long since I have to clean that up. I have. But uh, it's it's been a long time since I played against another Tyranid player. So it was a lot of fun playing against this Tyranid player. And this Tyranid player was named Andrew. So that was cool. Of course, I brought with Grey Knights because um, it's my go-to army when I have to travel. You know, like when I go visit my friend soon, I'm going to bring Grey Knights as well. And we're going to play Battle Report, obviously, with Grey Knights. Um, yeah, that's okay. So I brought Grey Knights. Unfortunately, Grey Knights versus Tyranids is a really hard matchup for Tyranids because... Uh, Tyranids just don't have much of an answer, you know, other than waves and waves and waves of little dudes. That's how you take out Grey Knights, is just you flood them. Because you force enough armor saves, and they die. That's essentially it. Right, you force enough armor saves on them, and eventually you roll some ones and some twos, and then your Grey Knight dudes are dead. So... And we'll see who Aruba's barking at again. And I'm back once again. One of my neighbors really likes to rev his motorcycle. I don't know why. Maybe it's new to him. Um, I don't know. I've had my motorcycle for about 10 years now. And I have never stopped and just revved it. And that's what he loves to do every day. He loves to pull it out, like turn it on in his driveway, and just rev it. And Ruby doesn't like that. It kind of bugs him. So... Oh, whatever, it happens, you know, neighbors are neighbors, but it's just really weird that he does that. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. There, right there. Like, that's him revving it, but he's not going anywhere. Like, if he's leaving, I understand. Like, I turn on my motorcycle all the time when I'm leaving. But uh, I'm not one of those guys that just likes to rev a motorcycle engine for no reason. So, I better move my brushes here. Uh, what are we going to do right now? Let's apply a shade. The great thing with thinning down your paints is that they dry really quickly. Now, I, it is a bit humid here where I'm living right now in Ontario. And uh, that's been a problem. Like, when I'm doing painting tutorials right now, um, every time I have to apply a shade, it takes like an hour and a half to dry sometimes because the humidity in my workshop. I could surely get a dehumidifier. I can hear all of you out there in internet land telling me that. So, nice shade here. The, these guys are not going to be a part of the tutorial. I'm just showing how to paint Azrael in the tutorial, in the warp. So, yeah. Look at that. It looks good. If I get these little guys looking awesome, that's good. And it's a commission, so it's cool. Two and one. I really love it. I love the feeling when you finish a commission, because you have that sense of completion. And then the customer sees it and they love it. Oh, it's awesome. Because you make their, their, you know, not their dreams, but you know what I'm saying? You're like, I dropped the other one now. Uh, you... You make their visions of what they want to come true. Like this particular commission, the customer wants standard Azrael painted up in standard colors. And that's what I love to paint. I love to do standard colors as well because it's really easy to follow and you don't really run the risk of the customer um, not liking them. Because if your customer says standard colors exactly like the Games Workshop model in color scheme, you go, sure, I can do that easily. You know, give me a minute and, uh, not a minute, you know, several hours. But 
I can easily mimic a color scheme from Games Workshop website. I just need you know, to look at the color scheme. and Most of the time it's pretty easy. I'm good at guessing, uh, not guessing, but knowing the colors. Like right now I'm just, I know what colors this guy should be, and that's good. When customers have custom color schemes, that's when you run the risk of sometimes the customer being unhappy with the, um, with the result, I find, because they had a vision of how it should look, and then you don't match that vision, per se. And then, there, then you have to fix it. And it hasn't happened really with this new batch of commissions that I've been doing. I haven't had a bad customer yet. But uh, I've had some in the past where, you know, they, they tell you what they want. You, you, are, you try to give them what they want and they just, they're not happy. That happens. That's the, art, that's, the, that's the downfall with doing someone else's stuff with them, right? Is that sometimes you don't match what they want. And then you do your best to do it, you know, and fix it. And I do that. So while it's drying, let's apply a... He's still rubbing his engine. Uh, let's apply the next color to uh, this guy. And I'm going to do two thin coats. As you can see, it's quite thin. Because I don't want it to go on too heavy and clumpy. At least I don't have to worry about the neighbor hearing me. He couldn't hear me over his engine. So we'll apply a couple of thin coats of... This is just your shabti bone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a shabti bone followed by a... Um, obviously another thin coat of shabti bone. But... Um, I'm going to use, Rick, uh, not Rickland Flesh, I'm going to use uh, Seraphim Sepia. I really want that sepia look because that's, uh, the Blood Angels on the website are really sepia finished. So, get that done and then highlight it up again. There's also ropes that are red. I should have painted, if I was doing this in perfect color order, you know, I would have done this color first, but it's okay. I like to always have a shade going and drying because then whenever I'm doing commissions because then that saves a lot of time while you're painting one area and another shade is drying as I said it takes a, a while to dry the shades the paints themselves don't take very long to dry but um, the shades really do sometimes when there's high humidity Oh, and by the way, last week I, I mentioned I gave a birthday shout out. Oh, it's my friend's birthday. I really should wish her happy birthday too. But um, all the birthdays this week, happy birthday to all of you too. But last week I gave a shout out to Stu, and I said it would be really funny if Stu was watching this, and he actually was. So that was really cool, and he appreciated the birthday wishes. Can't wait. One day, Stu and I are going to have a battle report where he's going to play his orcs. He's been building his orc army lately. So, orc versus orc would be fun. I don't... I, it takes a long time to film, so we'd have to make sure we have a good amount of time to film it. Because orc, ver, yeah, orc versus orc is usually a really slow battle report. Because it's just waves. Gonna stop again for Rubik. Dogs are barking. Yeah, that neighbor really annoys Rubik. Um, I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited to go on this trip to my friend's house. I call my friend, and that's the worst thing is I, I would I definitely consider him a friend, but I've never met him in person, so it's gonna be fun meeting him. So I really should try to go on more of these journeys. Maybe in the near future. Maybe one day when I can afford more or something. But, uh, yeah. Oops. Yeah, 
Yeah, first coat doesn't go on too nicely. Because it's then... Oh, that second coat, though. Oh. That second coat really cleans it up nicely. So here's the first coat. We're going to let him dry now, so that way we don't crack the outer shell of the first coat. And then we'll go to the next one. Batch painting little dudes. I love it. The little, little guys. And these models are fun. They don't really count towards anything. You know. But... And I never, I've only, I know, sorry, I have used, I've, I've proxied Azrael in battle reports when I worked for Mini Wargaming. But I've never actually used an Azrael model. So I should definitely get him into some battle reports before, um, he gets changed. Now I know what they're going to do. They're totally going to make Azrael no longer be able to, you don't even have to take Azrael to take Bikes' as troops or um, Deathwing as troops because they're going to remove that ability, I'm guessing. They've removed that ability from basically every codex that's come along, right? Take this HQ, you get to take these as troops or as fast attacks or as elites, you know, the ability to move around the force organization chart has been re greatly reduced in 7th edition. Be probably because anything can score. So, I am very much predicting Dar Dark Angels. They'll probably have a, uh, a formation in similarity to the, um, the Champions of Fenris. Where they can just have an all elite army or something like that. But, uh, yeah. And then I'm guessing that the bonuses will be like the Deathwing Strike equivalent as it is now. The Space Marine Codex is coming out soon. Some things got cheaper, I'm guessing. Hopefully it's enough to warrant a Codex change. Eldar really wasn't. Eldar was just like, let's uh, nerf Wave Serpents. But let's make bikes way better. So, it happened. You know, just... Not screaming skull. Yeah, it was. It's Elder is still a very strong codex. Space Marines will be a good codex too. They gotta give Space Marines love. That's what they. It's Space Marines are the baby of the of the, you know. They're the, the kind of the preferred child of the 40k world, so they gotta have some decent stuff. The models look good, the new dem Devastators look solid. Yeah, we'll go for another, like another 25 minutes. Or maybe I'll just come back after. I just need to go get something quickly. Yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll use Magic of Television and come back later when these, we'll apply like a shade and we'll come back after when the shade is dry and keep painting. That'd be kind of cool. That's a little thin. No, it's not too bad. A couple of thin coats, as I said, the first one goes on a bit clumpy, not clumpy, uh, transparent, I guess. And then the second one really just like, oh, it looks good. Look at that. He's gonna not let him fall off. I'm gonna, I ordered those bases from Brush for Hire. I'll show them off in a future video. Uh, I can't wait to use them because I'm getting tired of these tacks on bases. This sticky tack. Cool. There we go. First coat done on that one. So we'll go back, we'll do a second coat. 
apply a shade to them, perhaps, and then, uh, yeah. said they would attempt another drop off, but it didn't happen. So yeah, I should get back to my game. So it was a lot of fun. I played against a tiered player. We played Maelstrom of War. And I, we played Deadlock. And I had a very good first turn. I got eight points turn one, and he only had one. So from then on, it was basically an uphill battle for the Tyranid player. And the Tyranid player had two Flyrants. His most competitive tier in list do. It's basically an auto include. If you're trying to play quasi competitive, you bring at least one flyer. If you're in any competitive environment, bring two. Some people find a way to bring three. You know, because flyerins are basically the best thing tyrants have in the entire codex. Um, flyerins with twin link devourers, and sometimes the that flamer breath. So, yeah. But the thing is, I actually, I landed one of the Flyrants. He, if you're ever up against Grey Knights, obviously, do not ever let your Flyrants land. And I landed one. And they were right beside, what I did was, I cast, I brought up Force in a squad of pallet, like a tiny squad of Paladins. I had a squad of three Paladins near him, and I, and I cast Force, just in the rare case I could land him. I did that for both Flyrants. You know, if I land one of them, I'd just jump on them with anything that was in the area. And then uh, force was up, so I did that once, and that's all I needed. Like, I landed him, jumped on him, and one flyer dead. And I did tell my opponent very uh, politely that, just to let him know, that, you know, one Wraith Knight in, in, with normal rolling would kill three Carnifex. He, he had a triad of Carnifexes in a squad. So three of them, and I warned him, saying that the one Wraith Knight would kill, in close combat, all three of those um, Carnifexes. You know, normal rolling, because four attacks, he hits on, you know, sorry, if I get the assault, which normally I do because of the movement, right, I move 12 and then I can assault, um, I get four attacks, or five attacks on the charge, sorry, five attacks hitting on threes, master crafted, so you'd expect statistically like four hits, killing on twos if I activate force. So I did that too. I activated force and then threw him at him, and uh, as I said, and he was a little surprised after that but, as well. But um, but it did happen, right? It was just, I did, I warned him as well, but it's just when you see it in person, you're like, oh, it actually does happen. And it did. So one Wraith Knight just ruled, you know, more than three twos, and I got four hits out of the five, and then out of those four hits, I got four wounds, which with force up, instant killed all three Carnifexes, which is really a stupid part of Carnifexes these days. They should have, Tyranids should have access to Eternal Warrior again. Not it, Maybe not like back in 4th edition. The 4th edition codex, until the 5th edition codex came out, Synapse actually granted Fearless and Eternal Warrior. So... If you had your Carnifexes, you just... They couldn't be taken in squad, obviously. But uh, you just kept them in Synapse, and then they were going to survive because they had Eternal Warrior, and then it was a totally different story. But back in 5th edition, when the Codex came out, they, they took that away, killing a lot of the... Uh, you know, that was a huge blow to Tyranids. Losing Eternal Warrior. Eternal Warrior is one of the most powerful rules in the game. One of them. There's several, but uh, one of them is definitely Eternal Warrior because a lot of things just don't work on Eternal Warrior. So he's done. Yeah. Just getting a nice solid coat. This guy, 
before proceeding to the shading. And when that shade is applied, I might take a break for a few minutes and uh, run a quick errand and come back and paint more with you. Because of course, you, you're just watching, right, and painting along, so to you it's, it's a straight time, you know, not just... Yeah, but I'm very excited to go meet Mr. Patrick, Patrick Dublet. His name is not, his last name is not Dublet, but his, his codename is Dublet, his username. And he's been a follower of mine for a long time, so I'm excited to go meet him. It's going to be fun. Give those a second. Hmm, I should just, I really want to clean off his head. Clean up that coat. So that'll be a cool trip. And while that's drying, I'm going to start tackling the uh, his ears on the helmet. Yeah, the weeks just fly by. It's it's just the way of life, you know? Time is just... wow. It really is just flying by. Gen Con's right around the corner. I'm gonna check quickly. Are they predicting a thunderstorm today? I don't think so. Let's see. I'm starting to hear potentially. Am I hearing thunder or just. No. Tomorrow. Yeah, Gen Con soon. A couple, you know, month and a half now until Gen Con. Which will be fun. Assuming that overbrush didn't pick up a lot of the feather. That'd be cool. We're going to do a, a, a codex review again, but this time won't be you know terrible quality of Skype. It'll be in person, and it's going to be good. I mean, cool. He's a Blood Angel player. I play Dark Angels and Grey Knights. I don't really play Space Marines, the vanilla Marines. Nothing against that, but I have my vanilla army, and I'll be starting them soon. And... Cool. What else should I do now? Maybe the next color of red. Where the models actually look dry enough that I could probably do the shading. With the uh, serum from Sepia now. Maybe I'll do that. Yeah, they're pretty dry. Yeah, they're dry. Let's see. So let's see, serum from Sepia. Mm, I should probably thin it down a little bit. Sepia goes on really strong, I find. So. 
Maybe I'll thin it down just slightly. thin. All right, let's do that. Oh yeah, that's nice and good. Uh, you can see it's a bit watery because it doesn't pull up perfectly, but uh, it's nice. That's a good consistency I love when applying sepia because you don't want to go too crazy and become like iodine. Jurassic Park comes out this weekend. I don't know if I really want to go see it, personally. I don't know. I was really excited when I first heard like Jurassic World was going to happen in the movie. But then after I started seeing the trailers, I'm kind of not amused with the lack of creativity. You know, it just, to me, it, it's the same story. It's, why didn't they see it coming? You know, I, I just don't get it. Um, the very first movie... Dinosaurs escaped. To me, it seems like a combination of the original Jurassic Park, minus like the power outage, because this one is just the dinosaur escaped. It seems to me it's like a combination of, of the original Jurassic Park and the movie Deep Blue Sea, where they genetically engineer sharks to be smarter, and the sharks are able to escape and kill all the people. And I just, to me, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe it'll be a more awesome than it will because of this new made-up dinosaur. But, uh, I don't know. I'm going to think about it. It wasn't one of the movies I was stupidly excited to see after seeing the trailers. And the Chris Pratt riding a motorcycle with, with raptors just, I don't know. That seems weird to me. But is it, maybe it'll be an awesome movie. Maybe I'll wait for the reviews to come out and stuff and see how my friends think about it. Maybe I'll go see it. I just don't see it, you know, being that groundbreaking in the sense that, like, oh my goodness, what? You created a super smart dinosaur? Oh. And then the dinosaur escaped? Oh. Why didn't you create more security for the super smart dinosaur? And they're always like, well, we didn't expect it to be that smart. I'm like, well, you had genetically engineered to be super smart. You know, it's, it's kind of silly. Genetically engineer something to be super smart. Expect it to be super smart. Silly willies. Hmm. Alright, we'll take a break. I'm going to come back in a few minutes when this is dry. And we'll uh, keep painting. Hey everyone, so I'm back. Now it's dry. Time to do some highlighting. Yeah. So it's time to do some highlighting quickly with some Chef du Bone on these guys and some Screaming Skull and then we're in good shape. Yep. It'll be good. Uh, I got an angry message today. Uh, it was actually while I was, uh, I, I walked away for a few minutes from my PMG and I got a message. Someone sent me a message. They basically just told me, you know, they're unsubscribing from my free content. It wasn't even the war. It was my free content, which I find that one funny. Um, and from the free content, they're unsubscribing because of the lack of content for this week. And he said, if I want to, you know, if I wanted to keep them, I would be, it was really rude. I'm paraphrasing, but um, if I wanted to keep them, I should have, you know, put out content. And that, that kind of annoys me. Um, because, you know what, I work really hard on my content. I can't get it up as frequently as other channels, but, wow, you know, like, I put out a lot of content. This is going to be a slow week, this one, and I'm still planning on four videos going out this week. Um, four videos, probably this one, 
two um, how not two uh, face-offs that will be going up today and uh, my miniature painting 101 from Monday which I think went up Tuesday or Tuesday night um, and that's it but seriously um, I was those kind of messages don't really fade they, they kind of annoy me because seriously I put out more content than almost every other YouTube channel in miniature wargaming other than I would say mini wargaming themselves and beasts of war depending on the week and blue table painting blue table paintings really to me is just you know this is what we painted uh, mini wargamings and blue and beasts of war obviously are, uh, more contenty to me they're not just like hey this is what I painted but um, yeah, it really annoys me. Seriously, I work so hard on my content, and I'm a one-man team. I don't know why people don't take that in consideration. I'm just me. It is just me making my videos. Um, it, it's it's just me, and yeah, you know, mini wargaming is a team of people. They have many people. I used to be part of that team, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I, silly people, you know, I, the, yeah, crazy. And yet I still put out several videos a week. It's, silly. So those comments kind of annoy me. Yeah, I put out a lot of content. In between the Warp and my free channel, I put out usually about 8 to 10 videos a week. Which is a pretty good amount, I'd say. So. So if you're watching there, person who's... I doubt the person's watching this video, because he's probably unsubscribed. But, uh... I think you're a little silly guy. Oh, I've had some... I'm busy some, day, some weeks, and uh, this is free content free you know the warp I understand if I if I didn't put out a lot of content in the warp then people unsubscribe yeah it makes sense because people are paying right but I do put out a, a lot of content in the warp I've put out over 50 painting tutorials in the warp you know and uh, battle reports face-off episodes Face-offs are going well. I think it's been... I think... I, I'm very excited to see the end. Who wins this tournament? I think round two is going to be a lot more interesting than round one, though. Because the... the I wouldn't say the, the easy to kill people, but the relatively easy to kill people are going to be out by that point. Other than, you know, there's a couple really big matchups coming up. And I'm curious to see who wins. It's not entirely filmed yet. There we go. First highlight down on him. It's a bit cleaned up. Well, it's Jays are winning. I don't know why I took that off the stand. Jays are, are winning a lot of games. Um, it's been fun to watch Blue Jay games lately. Sometimes I watch them in my spare time. That's cool. I'm excited to have Azrael in my uh, my Dark Angels. It's kind of funny by the time I said by the time I have him on the table, he's going to be like, hopefully not nerfed or changed. Because Space Marines are this weekend. I don't think Space Marines are gonna, they're not tackling Blood Angels or not Blood Angels, Dark Angels. So, but for some reason they've decided to put out more like Battle Forces are coming back out again. The, the Dark Angel one is pretty, it's like four, five models, four models, it's all just the bikes. 
Yeah, to me, the best thing ever for this... Because I'm being a Dark Angel player, I loved the... Uh, just the Dark Vengeance set. To me, it's amazing. Three bikes, squatted Terminators, Tax Squad, you know. That's a good amount of bang for your buck. You get two HQs in the set. Uh, two HQs... And if you take, like, Azrael, that's one of the, you know, if you get Azrael, all the things are troops. So. That's pretty cool. Yeah, as I said, that content, I work hard. I know I do. And that's what it comes down to. You know, I'm uh, I'm just one person, and I, put out a, I work a lot on my content and stuff. And I eat, sleep, and breathe miniature wargaming. And not many other channels can do that. I work, you know, I'm not, it's not just me. I'm oh, sorry, it is just me. It's not like I'm a part of a team. All right, let's take some uh, Screaming Skull and just do some quick edge highlights and make some areas pop. And then we'll return maybe to the reds. Maybe the reds, and then, I don't know, silvers. It's not a very complex model. I'm probably gonna pay for like another 10 minutes. Because uh, the problem is with doing this this video in so many takes is I have no idea how long the videos are, and it happens sometimes where it was like two weeks ago I think it was an hour and fifteen minutes, which isn't a terrible thing. It's just a long video, right? It takes a long time to render. So let's get that crest there, looking nice there. What other shows have I been watching lately? American Ninja Warrior. I love that show. Makes me want to be in better shape. I'm not in absolutely terrible shape, but I'm not in good shape anymore. I really should get back into good shape. mine though so it's okay this one I believe is my commission I love these penguin jays I really do and it's fun to vent as I said when I get angry messages the thing is sometimes I feel honestly I put out so much content that people think that what I do is kind of easy or that it doesn't take a lot of effort. It takes a lot of work. It really does. It really does. And the fact that I can do it just, you know, I work hard at it. I don't... It's not as easy as it looks sometimes. This video is kind of easy because I just turn on a rant to you guys and I paint and that's not... And the girls, obviously. But that's not the hardest content. I agree. This one isn't too hard. It's equivalent of like a live show. Actually, I'd say it's harder than a live show because I have to carry the entire conversation, but, but, um, yeah, like, that looks good. Good. Let's do, finish up the, uh, I should do the chain on them. I think they're red. Break your break your chains, break your chains, when you break me. Yeah, the rope is red. All right, let's get that red rope. Red rope. Over here. Rubric lay down. Right. 
Yeah, American Ninja Warrior is good. I like that show. Some of the courses, though, are crazy. Like, and definitely some are easier than others, for sure. Like, the one two weeks ago was definitely easier than last week's. Not a single... Uh, I think two women finished the previous week, because they're... Sh uh, and even some of the shorter contestants. But uh, this week's was really hard. I found it to be much more difficult. And there goes my, one of my paints. Not saying the women are weaker or anything. It's just it's more built. Uh, the competition is more designed for for men's upper body strength. But uh, yeah, it's it's a hard show. These people are very dedicated to it, and I respect that. Obviously, some of them even quit their jobs just to train for American Ninja Warrior. Because American Ninja Warrior, it's, a, it's an interesting competition. Because what a lot of people don't know about American Ninja Warrior is that. If no one wins, it's it's designed so that to win, you actually have to finish the last leg. And if multiple finish, people finish the last leg, it's whoever finishes the leg the quickest. But in the American one, not a single person has ever finished. So, to date, they haven't had to pay anyone. There's been no prizes. And at the end, it's just like, oh, no one won this year. See you next year at American Ninja Warrior. And that's the show. So... It's really interesting, but if you win, you get like a million bucks. I think it's like a million bucks. 100,000 or a million. I think it's a million. But uh, it's just really interesting because there's no winner. It's like a, it's a competition, but there, can be no, there may be no winner. It's just weird. But it's great for the show, I guess, because they don't need to pay anyone. I might fix that highlight. That highlight over the arm is bugging me. <laughs> when I got my package. I got some really, really nice terrain today um, from, now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but from my vlogs from Adepticon, there was a really cool studio there uh, that makes terrain called Cracked Earth Studios. And they, they were the ones that actually set up the tables that I did all my battle reports on. If it wasn't for them, there would be no open gaming for 40k. Like, they were awesome, they saved my butt. Thanks to them, I had a really good time playing some games. Um, but uh, they're doing a Kickstarter, and I, I was able to get some of their their um, products ahead of time to do a bit of a review on. So I'll be doing a video spotlighting it probably tonight, because it's really nice. Like I, I just took a look at it. It is great stuff. So it's really nice. I'm going to definitely support this Kickstarter yeah, it's just a really nice train. Now it's more, uh, it's more steampunk or fantasy esque. It wouldn't, it's not as forty k ish as most of the stuff that I use. There we go. But it's great, unbelievable stuff. So check it out, crackedearthstudios.com, and they're doing a Kickstarter, I believe, starting next week. And I hope, I, I think they're going to be extremely successful because the, looking at the quality of their work, um, it's. It's really nice, really nice stuff. And it's pre-made and pre-painted. So that's great, right? So people just want some quick terrain that they can, you know, buy and put down on the table. Um, it's for them. So let's work a little bit on the reds quickly and then call it a video. Because this video is, is did I do? I did the other red already. I didn't do the eyes yet. So I'm just going to do the outer parts, her eyes, and up here, there we go.
You go ahead with a glaze after. Yeah, it's a little orangey for my taste. You guys have seen how much work I put into just the two little dudes. Right? Imagine how much time I've already put into, I put in hours into the, uh, the Azrael's. I was uh, making a tutorial out of them, so that's why they're not. That one's nicer actually, but I'll still, I'm gonna hit it with a quick glaze while it dries. Maybe I should work on the eyes as well. That's the base red. So, quickly hit the rope with this actually needs a shade. No, probably not. I'll just go over with the Evil Sun Scarlet. Let's do the Evil Sun Scarlet, get the eyes done. There, look at them. They're, this isn't done yet, obviously. This is. Uh, Still need to do the metallics, and these things have a little halo um, around them. So I got to finish those as well. There we go. A little bit of evil sun scarlet in the eye. Mr. Rubber Engine's back. Good. <laughs> so, yep. We're gonna call it soon. I think we're about at an hour. So that's okay. But it's been a good painting time. I think so. Good. So the guys, they're coming along. Cool. Excellent stuff. So we're gonna call it here. I'm gonna do a quick, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll do a glaze on those after. Let's call it now. So that concludes another painting with Jay. As always, thank you very much for painting along with me. I hope you got tons of stuff done too. Sorry about that rant. Just negative comments sometimes bug me, but it's okay. And uh, thank you very much for watching and painting along and subscribing to my channels. Once again, check out crackedearthstudios.com or uh, Cracked Earth Studios. Type into Google, you'll find them. T amazing terrain. I'll be making a video on them. Uh, or And also if you want a t-shirt like the one I'm wearing, Live by the Die, uh, miniwarriorj.spreadshirt.com. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with Jay.